Hi, welcome here on uh, a lake, uh, a lake in the south of Germany. And I have here with me um, Peter Nauwerk from Diesel Power in Sweden. And we have a very special uh, reason why we are standing here in the middle of this beautiful lake, which Peter will tell you where we are exactly right now, because we have some really nice uh, engines here, which have some premier here on the lake. So what brought you down from Sweden? What brought yeah, these engines down here? Uh, so, uh, Diesel Power is the uh, distributor for Cox diesel engines in Germany and we are here with our partner uh, Patrick from Water Polsch and uh, with Heil Schiffs Technik. Uh, we are in the city of, or outside the city of Tresbron. And why now? Well, we also have the Interboat show going on and yes. we have, uh, have an but event. The lake is which one? The lake of? La lake Constance. Uh, so it's quite all, big, all, yeah? All, so yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> some, sometimes in Sweden, when you think of a lake in Germany, you think of, you know, a lake not necessarily that big. <laughs> but when you take a ride here on the lake, then you realize it's actually a big lake. Yeah, the harbor we just left, where Hal Schiff Station is, there's 1,500 boats just in one harbor. And then there's another harbor next door, which is another 800 mooring. So yeah, it's, it's huge. And that's three countries here. So we have Austria there. We have all this border Switzerland, yeah. and then in the north border is Germany. Yeah, so ba basically diesel power is uh, responsible for, for both the Austrian uh, market and the, the German market. And we are very happy to have very good partners. Not only because now Patrick is uh, giving me the opportunity to make this video, but we are really happy to have Bote Polsch as our partner and our local partners here at the lake, Heil Schiffstechnik and uh, Boat Center Constance. So, so why, what is, like, or let me tell, the specialty on this lake, it's, it's like a drink water reservoir for yeah. Stuttgart, which is the, one of the uh, major cities in Germany, I would say one of the 10 biggest cities in Germany. So they, they take their drinking water from this lake. There's a Entnahmestelle, I don't even say in English, so where they, where they take the, the water yeah. out of the lake in a certain depth. So this lake always had, since ever, the most strongest regulations when it comes to uh, um, pollution. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so and, and this is more or less why we're here because boats there, uh, there are enough boats here anyway. So, but <laughs> what boat? No, we, we, we are very proud to say actually that our engines, uh, they have approval even for a twin installation. So you can have two times uh, 300 horsepowers on the lake. And uh, it's not only important because we are able to you know, put some engines on the lake, but it has a value for all over Europe because it's well known, especially in the industry, that Lake Constance has always had the toughest rules on, uh, on emission. And the reason why we were able to do that is simply that uh, the base design of our engine, it's a very modern engine, which already by itself is pretty much as clean as a diesel engine uh, can get. So, uh, yeah, so when we go in the petrol world, there should be a, a catalysator, or they, if there's bigger engines inboard, they have to have a at blue system. But yeah. you, your engine is so advanced, or the, the, the Cox engine, which you distribute, is so advanced that it's even possible without any at blue yeah. or any uh, exactly. special ad adaptation of the engine for that lake. And that was already last year with the single engine installation. And it's, I think, since it's this, this springtime, uh, spring also with the twin. for a twin. And th this opens um, this market, which is a little bit protected market, but again, it's a huge market south, in south of Germany here. It opens it for many boats which are now new in the market, because we know the trend for many shipyards yep. is nowadays towards outboards. And Absolutely. this would have brought people in this lake out of the trend of buying new boats yeah. because some models in the size which are good, well fitting on this lake, some uh, shipyards are not even producing any models yeah. with inboard engines anymore. Yeah, no, it's true. And we see actually a huge interest from all the three countries here, Switzerland, Germany, and Austria. And uh, I think the boat manufacturers are now happy because they have the boats, but in the past they were not able to sell the boats on the lake. And with our engine, now that is actually possible. So. Uh, yeah. Shall we just do a small spin? So we both go inside from there, you go on the side door, yeah? On the, no, on the side, yeah. So I take the wheel, so you just so stay we, there. So we have a professional now captain behind the wheel, that feels good. <laughs> 
So what we, um, I think to point out is it's, it's not a, a volume engine. It will not probably be in volume engine as the petrol engines are. True. Uh, because we are, we are operating as, everybody remembers, I think 30 years ago, a diesel engine in a car was like one third Very more expensive. And, and no, and more expensive also than a petrol engine. <laughs> And I think something similar we have as well here. Yeah. But again, the, the diesel engine, as you just said, wanted to point out, it, it, it's complete different vibration level and whatever. But we have a different price range because it's a more complex engine to yeah, build. But, but uh, I can say that all my life, you know, I have been in more or less sales and marketing and I have never had a product in my hands with as strong selling points as, as this engine. I mean, we are speaking about fuel consumption. We are speaking about the life expectancy of the engine. Uh, we are speaking about service interval, which is uh, two and a half times longer. Life expectancy is uh, two or three times compared to a gasoline engine. Obviously, fuel consumption is one thing. Then uh, another thing which is very often forgotten, it's uh, fuel availability. In, in, this uh, is very important. Also in the north of Germany, especially on the <coughs> Ostfriesische Insel, which is the, yeah. the northern coast uh, west of uh, Hamburg. Or, or, yeah. So, 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 so there, there are basically uh, many areas in, in Europe and all over the world where you are not able to get gasoline in, in, in the fueling stations along the, the water. And commercially always. There's always fishers. Commercially. Fishers, fishers there's absolutely, always there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then also for some people, it's actually the safety aspect as well. I mean, it's, it's okay, you know, when you have a small gasoline outboard to have a sm small tank, but not everybody feels perfectly comfortable in, in having a big tank of, of gasoline. Uh, I'm not saying that it is an issue, but for some people it's perceived to, to be an issue. Yeah. So and then I think range is a big issue because everybody asks us on all boats, can I have a bigger tank, can I have a bigger tank? No. because. We both know there's a CE certification, so you want to, to load a certain amount of people on board. So yeah. the boat needs to work empty and full. Yeah. So there would be space for putting bigger tanks, but you ca cannot just do because, yeah. again, if the tank is full and you want to bring like eight, ten people on board, then the boat is overloaded. So, and you cannot say the, the potential customer is so developed that he says he can only go with full tank with four people on board. No. So, so, so you have to reduce the fuel consumption if you want to go longer ranges and the only way is yeah. in this way uh, to, to optimize the boat, I think, which is Axopa, the boat we, being, we are on, is a it's very a per example, perfect boat. A perfect example because they, they made petrol engines, brought them down to the fuel economic level where I would say they are already on the, on the border of bad diesel inboard yeah. boats yeah this is really their their habit or the habit of Jan Jan Erik Vitala to, the to get there is extremely efficient yes. extremely efficient but if you add then the the yeah. Cox outboard engine on there then you drop it again another 30 percent uh, as you said before or 50 percent <laughs> more than on the petrol engine yeah. which is a we, we, nice we, we, we like that way okay, to present uh, it which is so, more, which is fairly true because uh, yeah this is a it, it, it is relevant and when for example we speak to our american colleagues who are distributing the engine in in north america the the number one selling point that they have and what is important for their market it's actually range because you have a lot of boats, uh, sport fishing boats or other boats, they go out on open sea. They want to go as far as possible and uh, before they have to turn back uh, to be able to make it back to the harbor. So, uh, yeah. So let's, let, let's uh, do what we've just been talking about. <laughs> so, so we're just uh, going now into the range of... What we've been talking about so we're going now is about 3000 rpm so the maximum so the maximum of that boat let's just do a turn because there's sailors the maximum rpm of this engine is 4000 we're just going into a turn with 34 knots you can really feel how the torque is continually pressuring the, the, the boat forward. We're heading now in the direction of Austria. We're running now 33 knots with 2.2 liters. Maybe you can just go a little bit closer. 
So 2.2, 2.3 liters on 33 knots. Half full tank of 720 liters, and we're having four big guys on board. Huh? <laughs> no. Yeah, um, I, I think that's probably important to mention that the boat, the boat is not small. It's actually some that, of us who are yeah. who are a little bit above average. With, no, you say, are. <laughs> let's say with two meters. A uh, 37 footer, the axle bar we're driving now. Uh, again, we're driving 33 knots on 2.3 liter per nautical mile. I would say a perfect cruising. Also, the noise level is absolutely below an inboard diesel engine. It's above a petrol output engine, definitely. But not like, I would not, I would say it's below a petrol output engine five years ago. Yeah, but if you compare it with a diesel inboard, I mean, we would not be speaking like this, uh, driving at this speed if we had the uh, diesel inboard. Yes, so. absolutely. Good, so just, uh, we just go once full, so to see what she can do. So we should reach about, so the maximum RPM, but this is not the strength of the engines, yeah? So we, we're passing now the 40, 42, we're revving 3,900, 43, and we'll soon hit 45. So um, this is, like for a diesel engine of 37 foot, a quite, uh, I would say, respectable speed, 45 knots. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Which, which is which is not 44.5, uh, but, but this is not the strength of these engines. So, but, but, but still, I think the secret is that we have a lot of torque in the engine. The 650 newton meters allows us actually to prop the the boat in a way that we are able to reach more or less the top speeds and, and characteristic of a gasoline engine. Yeah, so which is, which is uh, fully, fully um, under, under right written for me, like I, I fully agree. So even when, let's go a little bit slower, so we go again like in an area of 28 knots, something like this, let's see what we have there. I think we are dropping even below. I oh, know that was just because we were going down. Maybe you can convert uh, the consumption in kilometers per hour. No, but it's ah, okay. a bit now. You and so we're doing it. Uh, but you know, now we are a bit less efficient than even going 30. You know, now it would take a little bit of time. So no, 2.4. 74 liters both engines together. This is very important. So we can go more or less 10 hours on that speed now. So uh, this is, uh, yeah, then we, we're we having the 300 nautical miles range we have been talking about, which is about 100 more than with the petrol engine. I would say in this nice weather, I wouldn't mind 10 hours, so. Uh, good, um, yeah, so anything else to, to tell? Um, no, yeah, I, we, like, if, if, even if you're an English watching video, like a YouTube video now, this boat will be here until end of next week. It can be always tested with us in Germany. You have a test boat in Sweden. Yeah. There's all over the Europe, there's, I think, test boats nowadays. So, so basically, you can get in contact with the Diesel Power or Boat to Polish, and we will be able to guide you to a place where you can test the engine. I mean, we have plenty of test boats. We have in, Mallorca, in Mallorca, we have a Nimbus T11. Uh, which is a perfect setup, which we always can test in Kalanova. Yeah. So, well, welcome to also to Diesel Power in uh, just south of Gothenburg in uh, Sweden. There are always one or two test boats available. Good. Uh, yeah. Thanks, you guys here for for coming down to to the. the the the, the the Schwäbisches Meer or, or or the guys over there it's Bavaria they say the Bavarian uh, Meer no this is the Chiemsee so no it's the Schwäbische Meer so welcome to the uh, Lake of Constance down here thank you thank you, for you to come. Patrick okay very thank nice you. to be here thanks and okay hope to uh, you and see the cameraman we are happy we didn't lose him and he didn't <laughs> fall overboard <laughs> okay thank you thank you bye, bye. bye.